What's up? I'm Syrobe, and you all have been using bleed builds the wrong way. Well, he is incredibly confident for being wrong. Welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at Syrobe's bleed breakdown. Now, if you don't know this guy, he's the guy who does the mathematically correct builds. I remember making the first ever video on the double seppuku build, but even that build literally doesn't work the same anymore. In fact, 90% of the videos on YouTube for Elden Ring builds are mostly out of date by now. Explaining the example in detail, the samurai class starts with an uchi katana, which has a base bleed buildup of 45. You cannot increase how much damage the bleed does, but you can increase how fast you apply it. Okay, so we're off to a good start. This is already wrong. You can increase bleed damage, you can change the infusions of some weapons and that will give it bleed 1 or bleed 2. Bleed 1 will do 100. Flat damage, bleed 2 does 200. When successfully activated, the effects of bleed will deal damage based on 15% of the target's maximum HP. But not entirely true. On most bosses, the damage is not actually the same as bleed deals only around 10% HP damage instead. I did a bit of math and the HP was actually 10% damage on bosses like Margit and the Dragon Aguil. So my best hypothesis is 15% only applies to enemies that don't have a name and 10% to any bosses with a name or title. He makes a good point here, but it does depend on the boss. Some bosses will take reduced damage and that's going to be 0.7 generally but some bosses don't and it's going to be 10.5 percent of the boss's hp our first test we have one of the most controversial weapons in all of elden ring this item used to be extremely broken with the entire community at war complaining about it since then it got nerfed pretty hard so it's quiet now but i still rate it a decent 6 out of 10. rivers has less damage and less bleed buildup than it used to and it's pretty inaccessible until far later in the game at which point most late game bosses have high resistance or are straight up immune to bleed. As of patch 1.06, the Ash of War for Rivers of Blood, Corpse Piler, had both its damage and bleed buildup decreased when hitting an enemy with the ranged blood attack. But if you manage to hit the target with the physical part of the blade as well while using Corpse Piler, the damage is still decreased but not by as much. Either way, its bleed buildup was decreased across the board, which means you'll most likely kill a target before the bleed even activates. FromSoft did give it a small damage buff and patch 1.07 but it's still not as good as it used to be it does good damage and it's super fun to use still but for applying bleed it's a bit suboptimal i'd say it's a pretty honest weapon to use now since there are better ways to apply bleed also fun fact about the corpse piler it only deals physical damage the weapon itself deals a mix of fire and physical but there is no fire damage on the blood slash so here we're looking at the data mined attack values for corpse piler as you can see Everything scales off of AR, even the bullet, which isn't normally the case for most weapons. The bullet will scale off of a preset value. And so the Corpse Piler Blood Extension does have a fire motion value, and so it will do fire damage. Next up is the Reduvia. This weapon became a monster, and it's the best weapon for bleed right now, but due to its short range, it's a solid 8 out of 10. So let me explain. Previously, most people would power stance two Reduvias together, but stop doing this. After all the patches and updates, a single Reduvia can instantly deal over 316 points of bleed in one attack oh boy this is where things go off the rails now it's clear that he's just making stuff up he doesn't actually have the numbers to verify his data he's just using in-game testing which isn't actually accurate to finding the exact numbers so here we have the reduvia blood blade uh bullet it has 90 blood power that's going to scale off of arcane it also has status motion value and so that's going to determine the status that the weapon does on hit the status motion value is going to be 100, it's going to be like 1. Say if something is 1.2, that's going to be 120. So since it's 100, it's going to do the full, just the full bleed value of the weapon, which is 97. And so that's going to get us to 271 for the full Ash of War. I don't know how we got over 300, because that doesn't make sense from a mathematical standpoint. I have no idea how he got here, and it's incredibly stupid that he decided to claim it like it was. But as you can see, bleed uh, for scaling for Aduvia. For the Ash of War, the bullet specifically is going to give us 174 bleed. 174 plus 97 does not equal over 300. That is incredibly stupid. I have no idea why he thought that. The reason one Reduvia is now more efficient than two is thanks to patch 1.07. Here's why. 1.07 introduced the dual status buildup nerf, which means if you do wield two weapons with the same status effect, your buildup becomes decreased to be less effective than a singular weapon. 
Okay, continue on with our incredibly stupid takes. I have no idea how you can... This is one hand on run, so that's going to be the place multiply for basically everything in the game. It's going to be 100, so that's going to do 100% of a weapon's bleed proc. Say a weapon does 100 bleed, and you have a 100 motion value, it's going to do 100 bleed to an enemy, right? So now for daggers, paired L11 and paired L12 are different. So we're going to go with the paired L11, 50 plus 50 plus 50. That's the motion value. So it's going to be 50% of 100, which is 50. And then another 50% of 100, which is also 50. And that gets us 100, so that's going to be comparable to the first R1. Then it's going to be another 50 of 100, which is 50. So that's going to give us 150 total bleed, whereas an R1 would only give us 100 total bleed. So I don't know, I don't understand how we thought that power stancing a weapon will decrease the total bleed buildup compared to an R1. It doesn't make sense. You're still hitting with both weapons, so it's going to do more bleed damage than if you hit it with an R1. This is incredibly stupid. I have no idea why I have to explain this. Like, holy crap, dude. Which I'll expand on in a bit. But notice how it takes a ton of hits with the Duer Duvias to bleed Margit. But then here, it only takes a single use of the Ash of War to get bleed. Keep in mind, both times I had 80 Arcane and plus 10 Reduvias. Patch 1.07 also buffed the damage to the Reduvias Ash of War. Plus, it made the dagger itself have a melee hitbox. Previously, only the ranged part did damage and bleed buildup. The ranged part does add way more bleed than the melee part. But now, if you're really close, you can hit both parts from the dagger and the blood blade to get infinite bleed procs but wait there's more so i mentioned this earlier but let's expand on the dual bleed setups and seppuku builds now this setup used to be one of the most op ashes of war in the game but it got nerfed pretty hard and even then it's still kind of useful so i'll give it a 5.5 out of 10. specifically when you commit sudoku it used to give 84 extra buildup which could stack on top of a weapon's innate bleed as well like the uchi katana for example in patch 1.07 they nerfed it from 84 buildup to 30 bleed buildup which is literally the same amount as a single blood grease only that doesn't cost a quarter of your health bar especially if you're using the double seppuku version because the self-inflicted damage was increased as well. Double Seppuku was also indirectly nerfed by the previous nerf that reduced the effectiveness of dual status weapons. Seppuku is now just a worse version of Blood Grease, but even still, it'll allow you to reach the highest possible bleed buildup on certain weapons. There's a lot to break down here. First up, I guess we should start off with the obvious. Yes, Seppuku was nerfed. As you can see here, originally the Scavenger's Curse Sword had a value of 280 bleed. Uh, now they have a value of 156, which is a significant decrease. And then he makes the bold, very bold claim that Seppuku does not scale off of a weapon's arcane scaling. And that it only adds a flat amount of bleed. Again, I have no idea how you can think this and claim to know anything about the game. Seppuku adds 30 flat bleed buildup, which scales off of arcane. So with Scavenger's Curse Sword, you're going to get 69 additional bleed. In other words, you get 39 scaling from the seppuku on top of the 30 that the seppuku already adds. Like, this is just incredibly stupid. I would love to take a look at his other mathematical builds, because I'm sure it's just insane, the misinformation that he's spreading. Okay, so now that we've covered most of the bad things, I mean, builds, he still hasn't shown his build yet, but we'll get to that in a bit. Reduvia versus Scavengers. Now, as I've shown, Reduvia technically does have the highest bleed per hit compared to Scavengers if you're using the Ash of War, but that doesn't really matter. Sustained DPS is what matters in PvE, whereas damage per hit or bleed buildup per hit isn't really that important. Otherwise, like, Ultra Great Swords with bleed would be like the meta. Scavengers Curse Swords are faster and have less recovery than Reduvia. That means despite the higher bleed buildup that Reduvia has, scavengers will do more bleed up over a more consistent period of time, and they do more damage, and they benefit more from multi-hit talismans. That makes scavengers' curse swords infinitely better. Infinitely better. 
than Reduvia. You'll want to start any new character as a bandit, which allows you to instantly run to the Reduvia right after you take the first step in Limgrave and instantly use it without leveling up at all. For your skill points, this is a full arcane build, which is the only stat you need for the damage you saw me deal. Take 45 vigor, 20 mind, 20 endurance for healthy resources, 12 strength, and 18 dex minimum for late game when you can pick up your rivers of blood, and then just 15 faith. Only a little is needed to access a ton of arcane spells like blood flame blade for the great knife, blood boon, and swarm of flies for ranged options. Okay, so for my improved build, we're going to be level 130. We're going to have 60 vigor because that's the vigor soft cap. We're going to have base mind because mine's not needed in this build. We're going to have 17 endurance as that's the endurance we need to not fat roll. We're going to have 16 strength for physical damage scaling. We're going to have 17 dexterity for physical damage scaling again. We're going to have base intelligence and faith because they offer us nothing in this build. Then we're going to have 80 arcane for the physical damage scaling as well as the auxiliary damage scaling, which is going to be bleed in this case. Now you might see that the optimal class is bandit. It is not because we are actually going to lose AR for the strength loss and we cannot make that up with investing into more dexterity. So that's why we are the hero. For our weapons, obviously we're going to have the Scavenger's Curve Sword with the Cult. That is the standout, best bleed build for this level. For armor, we're going to have White Mask, Raptor's Black Feathers, and Tree Sentinel's Gauntlets and Greaves. Pretty standard bleed build armor set. For Talismans, we have Milton's Prosthesis, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Lords of Blood Exaltation, and the Claw Talisman. For the Great Rune, we're going to have Radon's Great Rune. It's basically a standalone best great rune in PvE. For the Crystal Tier, we have Alpine Hard Tier and Thorny Crack Tier. 